YouTube. All right, guys. For you Multistrada owners, some of you know the pain of the faulty fuel sensor that Ducati uses on these otherwise wonderful motorcycles. This is always shown by first an empty tank, even though when you know it's not empty, that'll soon turn into a blinking nightmare of amber lights where the screen here will be yelling at you that there is something wrong with the fuel sensor. There it is. Now this can happen with any of the uh, various fuel sensors that Ducati has used since 2010. Uh, the most current one is the F-Spec, uh, that is the last number on the part number. Um, I actually do have one arriving soon, but I wanted to show you a way to work around this issue until you actually replace the fuel sensor. And that is with one of these. This is a bypass that you can buy on eBay, but I'm going to show you how to make one because why not? Uh, I actually, this is the second version of this bypass that I have made that uh, accomplished the goal of getting the blinking light and the check engine light or a uh, malfunction indicator light, sorry, MIL, to disappear. However, it showed that it only had one bar of fuel, which was enough to get rid of this light and stop the fuel light from blinking, but it would not get rid of the low fuel light. And that bothered me. So I went ahead and made version two. Now, the reason I did this is one of the replacements for the fuel sender, actually the D spec, which is now on F, um, required a software firmware update for the ECU, which reversed the readings on the fuel sender. Now, if you don't know where your fuel sender is, this is the harness, and here is the connector for the bike side. This is right underneath your seat on the left side of your fuel tank at the base. So basically, you just unplug this. So we make this with just two different things. First, you're going to need a Sumitomo 2-pin connector. This is HM2P. I'm actually going to include a link where you can, or uh, part numbers, not a link, where you can order this either through Honda or through KTM. It's going to come with these two pins, as well as the plugs, which I've got sealed up here, um, which actually makes this waterproof. I really did this just because of the way that I ended up... Uh, wiring this in, it still exposed part of the resistor and I just wanted to make sure it was protected. You don't necessarily need to do that, but if you're gonna do this, you may as well go all the way, especially since shrink wrap is cheap. All right, the other part of this recipe is a 220 ohm resistor. You only need one uh, for a couple of bucks. I ended up with 49 more than I needed, but hey, I've got it. I'm not going to show you how to put this together because it should be pretty self-explanatory. But what you're going to end up doing is you're going to take one of these resistors out, connect it to the, uh, I can't think of the word at the moment, the uh, inside of the male connectors. You're going to slide the plugs over one end, then to the other. And then you're just going to insert it into your connector from this end then seal it up with either electrical tape or shrink wrap like I did. And it'll all fit very neatly inside. Again, a section of the, uh, the wiring here was exposed on the back side, which is why I sealed it up. Again, may not bother you, but I didn't want to take any chances. So that's all you need. Uh, the connectors range anywhere from three to twelve dollars depending on where you find them and how much they want to charge you for it you probably won't pay more than two bucks for a set of resistors like this uh, probably about 25 of them now if you really wanted to you could go super gorilla style 
and not even use the connector. I've seen some people do that on uh, some of the forums. And all they do is they just go to the main connector, jam it in there, and then fold it back and tape it up. Easy enough if you want to go that route. I just like to have it finished off as best as I can because it's Ducati. Why not? We're not working on some Jixer. Okay? So that, once you have it connected, or all put together, just go ahead and plug it in. And as usual, with doing this one-handed is not as easy as it should be. I got it connected, I just tuck it away. Then I take the fuel sender harness and tuck that away. Then when you turn this on, for real, when you turn it on, you now have a full fuel gauge and you no longer have any blinking lights. Simple as that. So hopefully this helps somebody. Um, now I do want to tell you that if you, for some reason, don't have newer uh, fuel sender, which you can actually tell somewhere here on this harness, right there. Well, let me get around the other side. Sorry, not the uh, cleanest production, but you know what? It's what we got. So right here, 201D. When they introduced the D model for the, uh, the fuel sender or fuel sensor, you had to get a ECU firmware update because it flopped around the readings where if you had a full tank, it would show constantly low and it would fill up as you actually burnt through your gas. So in that case, if you happen to have an A, B, or C fuel sender and you don't have that firmware update, the difference is instead of using a 220 ohm resistor, you're gonna use a 50K or 50,000 ohm resistor in its place. That was actually the first iteration I did. And again, it showed me it was constantly empty. So depending on if you've got the firmware or not, either use the 220 for the newer firmware or the 50K for the older. Anyways, I hope that helps uh, somebody out there. I couldn't figure out how to work around for the newer firmware, so here it is, out in the internet for real now. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Chris Wingman. Get out and go ride. See ya.